Welcome to the round three of the 2018 Australian Disc Golf Championships from the shores of Lake Burley Griffin in Canberra. My name is Kingsley Flett, or Kinger, and I'm here with Jordan Wheeler, Geordie as we know him. Welcome Geordie. Thanks for having me. What was the trick to hole one, mate? Hole one is you thrown up over a hill and then down into a little protected basket. So you just want to throw, you just want to get a nice controlled distance shot on your first one, and then the second shot is the, the tricky one. And that's just textbook um, Paddy Robinson there, isn't it? Just that sneaky distance with that smooth power he's got. Yeah, he's great at doing that. It doesn't look like he's throwing it as hard as he can. Yeah. And he's just throwing a nice controlled shot and just letting the disc fly the way it's going to fly. Whereas Jacko always looks like he's throwing it hard. He's got that raging bull kind of power going yeah. on there. Yeah. Here's Tim Marchbank. Pretty glad that he made it to the tournament in the last minute. He was a, a good addition to the to the top card. Yeah. Well, he didn't even think he was going to make it two days before. So That's right. Yeah. There's Mr Wheeler himself. Yeah, I was really happy to make the lead card. It was one of, one of my aims for the weekend, so happy to be on there. Didn't quite get onto your drive there, eh? But you've still got a reasonable upshot. Yeah. I had a couple of, couple of chances on this hole to not mess it up, but unfortunately I did. And that looked like it just scooped up a little bit high, eh? A little bit of nose up and the throw. Yeah. That hill is a little deceptive. You really, you really want to throw it down. Yeah, it looks like it sucked a few people into doing this, which is just throwing too high and then yeah. fading where you don't want it to fade. Mm -hmm. And um, an extra shot to get in there. And Paddy just makes it look really simple, doesn't he? Nice little side arm skipping under the branches. Yeah. In putting range. Jacko's kept it low and hard, but he's just missed to the left. Really, I really wanted to get it through a little gap there, but I've, I've missed it and left myself a bit of a putt. Tim starting what's going to be a long day for Mr Miller filming him, taking about three seconds to size up his putt and firing it out, not giving the cameraman any time. Oh. And here we go, evidence that top card people are human. That was just a straight out mistake by Jacko there. Left himself with a tough putt, which he puts in pretty nicely. That was a nice putt. Yeah. it is yeah. my, my my favorite part the low one yeah so Patty gets a chance to get a stroke on the card on the first hole here as if his seven throw lead wasn't enough he turns it into an eight throw lead Tim with a nice tap in. Yeah, so the story of Tim, is he, he, he found out very close to the tournament that he, that he was in line to be awarded the uh, Hall of Fame in Australian disc golf for his long contribution he's made to the sport. He told that to his employer, so they decided they'd better give him the leave to turn up. Yeah, it was great to see him there. Uh, hole two here is just a nice straight shot. You, if you throw it straight, you get the reward. If you miss either side, you're in a bit of trouble. That's a beautiful straight drive from Paddy. Missing all those fir trees or pine trees on the left. And you wouldn't want to go in there, I don't think. You would be, you'd be pitching out anything from about a metre to the edge of that rough, I reckon. Yeah. Jacko's trying a great shot too. Yeah, he managed to hit the only quick spot on the on the hole there and got a little skip. And 
Tim's throwing a beautiful shot as well. A little bit short, but plenty of skip to get up under the basket. And I've just thrown thrown nose up again, so made that mistake twice now. Hopefully I can yeah. hopefully I can get over it. <laughs> Start to get your rhythm. Yeah. And another oh, well, low part. There's that bottom rung you like so yeah. much. Yeah. I was a little scared of Jacko going into this event because uh, I had never played with him and he was always putting these really good scores up and, and and he plays really well. But this was, he gave me a little, a little I don't know, a chance, I feel like, watching him, watching him. Three putt that I was like, okay, maybe he is beatable. He's human. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't help that they dress all in black these Kiwis. <laughs> With the old uh, Murray tattoos, he's looking a bit gangster. He is, yeah. Jacko. He's a sweet guy, really. Yeah. Paddy taps his birdie in. Great birdie by Paddy and Tim here. Yeah. But if you're leading a major tournament. On the last day, and you go birdie birdie to start, you'd be pretty happy with that. I'm sure Paddy's pretty satisfied where he's at now. Hole three. Now, this is a tricky one. You want to get the drive out there and hopefully not a hit a kangaroo that's hanging out in the fairway. But they, they're pretty good at getting out of the way for us. That's right, there was a mob hanging out on that corner, wasn't there? Mm -hmm. Some of them have been to the gym too. There's some big boys <laughs> that makes those ruse. It's a nice shot by Paddy. That's, that's basically perfect. He, he could be a bit more aggressive and get a little further, but you just really want to get out of this gap. And... Yeah, well, Tim's quit the pine tree on the right. It looks like he's in space out there. Yeah. So here's the lefty having to do something a little bit different. You've got to get this turning over, don't you? Yeah. Unfortunately, I just, I just pulled over a little too much. I was worried about hitting that tree on the left and just didn't get the disc to do its full flight. Yeah. And Jacko's tried to cut too much of the corner there. He's clipped something early. Yeah, that's the mistake you don't want to make on this, but... Forced to pitch out. Yeah. yeah, but it's not too bad. You can pitch out, and if you finish the whole plane smart, it, it, won't, it won't get you too bad. Have you ever watched that Iron Leaf video by uh, Greg Barsby? Uh, I think it's a gum tree that he's talking about. These gum leaves, they will knock a disc down even if you just clip them slightly. It's quite amazing. And Tim's had the bad luck of hitting one there. You look like you're just yeah, a little bit I was, short of the island there. I was happy with that throw. It, uh, I just mis misjudged the distance and re really wanted to park it rather than playing safe over to the right there. Tim looks like he's uh, got a bit of luck there because he's snuck under those signs. But you guys, when you were playing, you thought he was OB at that stage, didn't you? We did, yeah. 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 We uh, almost didn't even go and look. Right. But thankfully we went and had a quick look before he threw. That goes powered through. It's interesting, that's a very similar line, isn't it? Yeah. Different result. But that's the, yeah, I saw that mistake a lot. And that tree, it looks like you should get through it, but it just overhangs the out-of-bounds there and it just it seems to smack a lot of discs down. But the pure gap is definitely out in the open on the left. Sure. So you've got to take your medicine from the drop zone here. Yeah. And here's the rest of you finding out that Tim was actually quite healthily in bounds. Yeah. So that was that was a good break for him there. Yeah. See if you can turn it into a birdie. Oh, that top rung that you all love so much. Yeah. And Paddy's human too. That was a pretty weak putt, all, all things said, isn't it? Yeah. 
That was very uncharacteristic. Yeah. I think that was the only only putt like that I saw from Patty. Mm-hmm. Noticed a few of Jacko's putts kind of scooping high in these early holes. Um, like you said, lucky you know he's uh, he knows these baskets pretty well because his employer makes them. Yeah. And he knows there's no top band there to hit. But um, yeah, on a disc catcher, he would have been putting again on a couple of those shots. Tim tapping in for his par. I think maybe it's a. No, maybe it's a bogey. Maybe a bogey. Yeah, because he had that. Yeah, you oh, yeah. hit that early tree. But yeah, that's it. Yeah. This is hole four. Just a little downhill. You can really go to either side of the... There's a high the line and a high the line. Either side of the line of trees. and Just want to get it down there and have a putt at it. Not much danger. Just a nice clean shot will get you a look at it. No, you can take the boy out of ulti, but you can't take the ulti out of the boy, can you? When you look at the way Tim throws, he's got that skipping in, running in, and that little bit of flick, but mm -hmm. he still gets plenty of power on it. That's a beautiful shot there. Yeah. Notice you're choosing to throw off the dirt there, not those um, tee pads? Yeah, so those tee pads actually just came in before the event started. So I actually practiced from right in between them, and so once they put those two tee pads in, neither of them were in a spot that I really liked, so... Okay. I had nothing, no problem with the tee pads grip or anything. It was just the actual position they were in. And Todd said I was fine to throw anywhere in between the two orange markers. So. Yeah. Oh. Oh well, that's the opposite. That's a definitely non-weak putt from Paddy. That's a beautiful comeback after he left his drive a little bit short there. A little yeah. bit high. Yeah, it's too much more higher than I want. I want to really get that flattened out. Jacko getting dialed in now with his putts. That was a nice, strong, confident putt. Mm -hmm. Really not uncommon, is it, this start of a third round of a big tournament like this for people to be a little bit tired. And um, the consequences, as every hole passes, the, the consequences of every shot just exponentially start going up. So there's some nerves. And, yeah. Yeah. And uh, even though we can see Paddy's got a healthy eight throw lead here, I'm sure he's not feeling safe. I'm yeah. sure he's uh, a couple of double bogeys and a bit of bad luck. And you know, so tell us about hole five, mate. Hole five. This is another one you want to get your drive out there, and then a nice drive will help you set up nice for a good approach. But it's where the lefty type holes start coming into play a little bit because it's a nice. Nice lefty hyzer approach to the basket if you can get your drive out. There's a beautiful air shot there by Jacko. A little bit of turnover, a little bit of skip. Tim's tried a uh, roller here, which looked like he just had the angle wrong. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I saw him get it in uh, round one, I think it was, and when he get when he got the angle right, it worked out well for him. A bit like that, really. It's a beautiful roller. Yeah. And it's still going. It's still going. You guys would have lost sight of it by now. We did, yeah. I was waiting for it to curl up to the right, but that hill just held it down to the left, and then... It's finished with a cut back, which yeah. is so unusual. Yeah, he just manages to stay in bounds over there. Yep. I've uh, gripped that a little bit too much. I was trying to hug that right side and then just kind of finish straight and left. There's Tim throwing a bit of a loose second shot there, getting himself in trouble, the no B. Look at that nice line there for the lefty, haven't you? Yeah, so even even way back there it kind of sets up nice, but ideally I would have been another 20 metres and then it's just a big hyzer shot over those trees and not much risk. Yeah. Yeah, you've got to throw it really hard to get through that gap and still make the basket. It's a it's a sneakily placed basket in that respect. Mm -hmm. To get, and Jacko's a, a good case of what I just talked about. He um, didn't have enough power on that to make the distance. That 
Paddy using his sidearm beautifully there. Just gets over the trees. Yeah, that's how it's meant to be played. Yeah. I was watching Tim throw this and I was like, oh man, that sign looks like it's riding his way, but he barely even thought about it. <laughs> he took two seconds and... Looks like he missed it by a good three, two or three centimetres maybe. Yeah. Yeah. You can see this wind picking up a little bit now. Just, It's only a slight wind compared to the previous two days, but it's still affected a lot of shots. And I've noticed that with holes that are around, or with courses that are around water. Uh, the little bit of wind, it might just because the wind picks up a bit of humidity. I'm not really sure of the physics and the aerodynamics of it, but you only need a little bit of wind around water for it to really affect flight. Mm. Ooh, unlucky I guess, there isn't, I guess there isn't much resistance around water. The wind can really fly over it pretty quick. And True, yeah. yeah. So unlucky bounce out there for Tim. Mm. Jacko's left too much hyzer on that first putt there. Scooped it up. He's done that a couple of times this round. Yeah, these elevated baskets are always a little scary. Yeah. This one got me a couple of times. Yeah, they're a good addition to the sport, elevated baskets, because they really ramp up that risk-reward equation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Make you think twice about going for it. Yeah, this is this is one you really want to get. This is the first chance you really get to breathe and just throw a nice controlled shot out there, and you should have should have an easy look at a at a birdie. If you really if you really went for it, you you could get you could get the eagle here, but it's such an easy bir birdie that you just don't want to bring that OB into play or anything and get your easy par. That'd be the reason behind Paddy's choice of sidearm there. Mm -hmm. Just so he stays well off the OB, regardless of what happens. Doesn't look like Jackson's much of a sidearm person. He's throwing a lot of backhand where he would, could throw a sidearm. Yeah, I mean, and he, he's, he's got a solid sidearm, but he, he definitely prefers the backhand. Yeah. But when he does use it, it doesn't, doesn't seem to be too bad. So the tree hit by Tim, but everyone looks like they're in range for a for a three here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's quite an easy approach. You can you can stay a little short because there's OB just behind that scares you a little bit. So, like Tim's Tim's done, he's left it a little short, but shouldn't be a problem for him. There's that sidearm coming in handy again from. Uh, from Paddy, he wasn't in the greatest spot there, but he got himself out nicely. Solid run from Jackson there. Yeah, would have been really nice to see, see an eagle on it, but he, he's done well to get the easy birdie and have a, have a shot at it. Was it eagled over the weekend? This hole, do we know? Not that I know of. No, no. I didn't hear. Didn't hear about it. I'll see it in the stats. Yeah. I think uh, there's only one eagle that I heard of. Um, can't remember. I can't remember his name now that got it. But on 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 one of the par fives. Okay. I do believe that was a star birdie frame. But as we were saying, that's a that hole must birdie really for the mm -hmm. for open guys. Yeah. So yeah, after that easy one, this one's a bit tougher. Like there, there's a bit of a gap a tight gap here and you have to throw it up over these trees to kind of get it in the perfect spot. You see those trees on the left there is what you really need to get over. And that'll give you a look at it. Paddy does it well here and that just lifts just lifts in time to Get to the get to the kind of landing zone. He's still blocked by a tree, but he's had it in the open. Yeah. You've done the same. 
I've done the same, and just with that extra little bit of distance, I actually got a little lucky here to skip through this tree, and that gives me an open look down to the basket. Still choosing his backhand here, Jackson. Yeah. There's leaves flying. He's hit something short. Looks like he might have gone OB. I think he's safe, but he's just in a lot of trouble over there on that left. Tim didn't get the flip he was after there. Yeah. It's, again, the common mistake. It doesn't matter how over, understable the disc is. If it's two nose up, it's not going to turn. Mm -hmm. When you're a bit tight and a bit nervous and not throwing with that nice relaxed wrist, that's a very common mistake to make. Yeah. Both these guys here don't have a whole lot, but a big highs are out. It's good management of the hole. They'll get their pars and try again on the next one. Yeah. Simon... Oh. Uh, Jacko's actually left himself a bit of work there, but he does. That was a great shot from That's that a, position, yeah. Yeah, a great up shot from considering where he was. But it looks like he's still going to give up a another throw or two to Paddy. Yeah, so that's a reward I... I get for getting that drive all the way out there, just a nice easy putter approach. What the video is not showing here is that's quite a steep downhill and mm. very easy to overcook that up shot and um, to flip over those dude banners, blatant sponsor plug there, and um, go out of bounds off the, the up shot. Great putt by Paddy. Still, still par free, I think, on the round, just birdies and bogeys. Just the one bogey, maybe. Yeah, just the one bogey. But Paddy takes another another throw on Jackson there, so we're out to an 11th throw lead. Plenty of disc golf to go, though. This is a monster course, par 99, so... Still 20 holes to play. All right. <laughs> this is another... Easy one, I guess. I, it's not easy to get the birdie, but there's not a whole lot of danger. You throw it down there, and if you have a nice throw, you can get the birdie. But yeah, for the right hand backhanders, they'd have to control the finish a little bit, wouldn't they? There's a chance of uh... yeah, big flare skip, maybe out of bounds. But yeah, it, it's 100, 115 meters, but it it plays plays a bit shorter because it's going downhill and. What we're seeing here too with Paddy, I feel, is his, his maturity as a player because you can really see him picking his fights here. This hole he's just not decided, decided not to take on. He's just playing really conservative, not playing conservative all the time, just when he, when he doesn't want a, a bad result. Yeah. That's a really smart play. It's a good shot by Tim. That's good. Throwing it down that hill and just making it look easy, really. Letting the hill do the work, yeah. yeah. You got a tricky upshot here. You've got to put a bit, a bit of ante on this, eh? Yeah, I mean, I had the Heiser line or the ante line, but I've just been feeling more confident in that little ante. Just to give it a soft run. and it goes against the doctrine, mate. <laughs> I know. The doctrine of when in doubt, Heiser. <laughs> You know, you lefties are different people. Let's right. Face it. Yeah, I just want to throw like all the right hand backhanders. Yeah, it's clearly. Oh, there's that <sighs> top rung that everybody loves. Yeah, I think Tim might have even eaten a fly on that throw. Yeah. He they came over complaining about it at least. Yeah. 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 The same fly is trying to get Jacko off off this rhythm too. Maybe they're coming over from that dog park over there. Yeah. I don't remember. I don't remember the flies being that bad. Yeah. Kind of a nice thing to think about when a fly crawls in your mouth, isn't it? Where it's, <laughs> where it's been before you. <laughs> Sorry, Tim. Yeah. Sorry, Jacko. Yeah. 
Paddy gives one back to Jacko there, but it's still a very healthy lead. Yeah. Hold on. Hold on the tricky one. You want to... There's a, that island there, and you just have to put your drive in a good good spot so that you can have a easier approach, but... It's, it's easy to mess up. It's one of these holes where the mound, or a... a yeah, kind of a, a mound on a fairway really tricks you in terms of the distance, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. And it looks like everyone just erred on the side of throwing really short here. Yeah, I don't think I saw anybody throw within 10 metres of that OB line just because from the tee, it looks like it's going to come up real quick. Yep. And then you get up there and everybody is just 20 metres short every time, leaving themselves a trickier upshot. Yeah. And it doesn't matter how many times you practice holes, sometimes they just get you visually like that. It's a, it's a good thing about our game, just the variety of terrain like that. Yeah. So the OB here is just playing as a hazard. So there's that 10 meter, roughly 10 meter island, and then anything outside of that, you just play from where it lands. Got a little backboard there if you go too deep, and then just the flags early to mark it. Yeah. Paddy's done that pretty safely. Mm. You've gone big, overstable chip shot. Jacko's done similar. Really is the way to go on up shots like that, isn't it? Just going overstable. Because you can control your length so much more. Mm-hmm. Tim's a bit more old school, but he's got it well under control as well. Unfortunately, a little store there, yeah. He, he probably deserved a little skip off that, but... It doesn't look like this green's giving many skips. Mm. Those tufts of grass look like they're a little bit sticky. Well, they'll skip when you don't want them to skip, though. Yeah. <laughs> That's the way of things. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there we go. Spin putter cans one. There's a nice tester for Jacko coming up here. Yeah. He pulls another stroke back, I think. That was a good putt too, because there was a road right there, and he he had to wait a while. There was cars kept driving past, and he did good to refocus and get that putt. To reset, yep. Oh well, what was an 11 throw lead's now down to a 9 throw lead, so he's making a little bit of headway, Jackson. This is our first kind of short hole of the course, but it's not as not as easy as it looks, just because there's a tight gap and the basket on the hill. You really need to park it to uh, get the birdie. Yeah, I do declare uh, maybe maybe some holes at um, Ruffy Lake, uh, perhaps uh, in Victoria, but I don't know of many holes in Australia that are blocked off the tee like this, mm. where you have a, a something right in your right up in your grills as you're throwing to try and think about. It's, it's, it's a common thing in woods courses in the US, but yeah, this is this would test a few people for sure. Yeah. Tim's just hyzered that out a little too much. Ends up pin high, but up to the left. But he's taken that right hand hyzer route. Yeah, that was the most common route. That was, I saw the most birdies with that route. Once, if you got over those trees, you could spike into the hill a little bit there and get a nice little, nice little birdie. Yep. He's laying up for his three, and Tim's doing the same. Yeah, you can kind of see from this angle that hill, and just the fast green makes makes running a little scary. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be a low percentage shot running that one. Yeah. You're bound to fly down the hill. This is another reason why that high as a line is good because you end up somewhere like Jacko and you can kind of give it more of a, more of a run. Yeah. That was a good putt. Nice yeah. birdie. So there's another throwback. So now we're down to an eight throw gap. He's chipping away. And in the context of the round and how early it is and how much there is to play, as we said, it'd be... Definitely feeling like he's a chance at this stage. Oh, 
I know as commentators and spectators we, we tend to overplay the, the pressure and the dynamic between people but I'm still I imagine Paddy will be feeling a bit nervous mm-hmm. yeah this is a real short one just tucked, tucked into like on a hill again but there's plenty of room on the left just to hyzer it in it's a little bit tricky because you have to play with the slope of the hill but well, Jackson's overcooked that a little bit mm-hmm Oh, yeah, for the lefty, this would be tricky, wouldn't you? Because you're fading down the hill. Right. You have to control that really well. Yeah. Which you... Yeah, I've just thrown it a little deep. And that's, I guess the hardest part about this is you can end up in that rough there and get quickly blocked. That's a great shot. There's an experience through before throwing a seasoned old disc. I don't know what that would be, but it turned late. It's a gator. Gator. Yeah. It's a gator with a lot of fur on it. Right. Yeah. Because once that bit the wind, it just turned. It's beautiful. You don't get that out of new discs, that's for sure. Yeah, I remember him throwing that and being a little worried. But it got over and I was like, I was just waiting for it to hide the back, but it just never did. Just, yeah, yeah he, know, he knows that disc well. Yeah. Those gators and rhinos. Yeah. Big, oh, Jordy with the top rung again. Yeah. That'd be a good disc to steal out of Tim's bag one day just to mess with his head, you know. He, he probably wouldn't sleep for a week. Nice birdie from Paddy. Stems the bleeding a little bit. Takes it back out to a nine throw lead. You and Tim are having a bit of a battle here, aren't you? A couple of throws between you. Mm-hmm. The battle for third. Yeah, and and the um, guys on the second card are also battling with us. Yeah, I was uh, I was tired tied for fourth going into this round, and uh, we were using disc golf metrics, so. It's easy to keep track. Those guys were putting the pressure on a little bit. So what's the trick to this hole, mate? I've seen, I saw a huge variety of drives on this tee. I haven't learned the trick to this hole yet. <laughs> um, there's a perfect landing spot down to the right. If that had flipped, it would have it would have been in the perfect landing spot. But I mean, that's where Paddy has been playing it too. So it's he, he's probably playing it a bit more conservative, taking the five. Um, maybe a chance at a four, but it's yeah, it's it's a, it's a really tricky hole. You just kind of have to throw, and then there isn't much of a gap through those trees, except yeah, there's a perfect spot right down there, but it's just so hard to get to. That's a nice drive, but that's, um... yeah, so I just decided to get it as far as I could, and and then deal with deal with the trees. I don't really have have that line that Paddy's taken because. Um, like to, I just don't have the sidearm to do that big high as a shot. This is real golf, isn't it? This is playing to a fairway, playing another fairway shot, having to think your way down the whole way. Yeah. And Tim's in the more common place. I saw most people over the weekend stuck up high, trying to think of a way through these trees. He's going low. I think he there we go yeah he he clipped a branch but he kept going so forced his way through that's all you want to do on this is just keep keep getting down the fairway so you got a driver in your hand there yeah it was a awkward stance i was hoping not to be next to that tree but i had a little um a little gap there that i thought i could hit but that's not too bad Just tried to punch a big hyzer out of the trees there. And he's finished up to the right of the basket, which is, again, where a lot of people were putting from over the weekend. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Paddy... Paddy's never really been worried on this. Yeah, that's a good shot. He's just taking the three hyzers and he'll get his birdie or a par for it. Making the game look simple and a bit boring, Paddy. Right. Which is how all disc golf should be played. Yeah. Low scoring disc golf, that is. Now, this is a scary upshot. You really want to trust your ability to pick a length here. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, 
even on that FD3 that I threw down there, it, I was I was worried it was going to hold hold straight for a little too long, but ties it in well for me. I was always happy to get this hole. Yeah. Can't afford to miss those, Jackson, if you're going to chase the man in red down. A little bit of a death putt here. Yep. I saw some putts jump out of this basket and roll down into that water. Yep. Another metre or two back and it would have been a bit scarier, but that was well within Paddy's confidence circle. Yeah, I didn't realise he birdied that, actually. That's... He made it look easy. That, 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 that approach shot must have been really good because he, he threw that hyzer in and those trees on the right kind of blocked that line a little bit. Yeah. So he steals, steals another one off Jackson, takes it out to a 10 throw lead. And you steal one off Tim, so you're one behind Tim now. Hole 13, this is, this is a good lefty hole. It's just a open on the left. You don't want to throw it OB on the left, which which happened to a few right hand backhand players because they were trying to trying to throw the Annie and it just ties it out on them. So Paddy's made the smart decision here and just throwing the side arm, letting the Heiser in. Never never anything to worry about really. Yeah. Great great roll. Leaves himself with a putt though. Yeah, when you're putting at a hole, 122 metre hole with your sidearm, you know you've got a decently powerful sidearm, don't you? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's a nice finish for you. Yeah, it was. Uh, it just clipped those branches. Oh, it's an unlucky kick for Tim. There we go, Jackson with a sidearm. I see what you mean. Very solid. Yeah. Not quite the power. Yeah. And I mean, and that's what happens when you don't don't use it for a whole round too. It can go, get a little cold and might yeah. might take a few to get it dialed. Yeah. Quite different mechanics. Mm -hmm. The two types of throw. That was a good putt. Just a little bit of bad luck, really. Mm. And same with you. <laughs> Both skipped off the bucket. Yeah. There's one of our... Uh, I think we called that one Boof, didn't we? One of our bodybuilding kangaroos. Yeah. Yeah. Not to be messed with. I think he was getting in Tim's head a little bit over here. Yep. Yeah. There's nothing like... Nothing like some kangaroo pressure. Yeah. Oh, Timbo. He had to look right at him on that one. Yeah, he was staring him down. Buff was giving him the stinky eye, I reckon. So that brings you a little bit closer to Tim. Yeah. Yeah, not not the way I wanted to do it. But, uh, yeah, happy for a couple of strokes. Hole 14. There's a little gap over to the right. you got to throw through and then navigate some trees. And, yeah, it's, it's a tough one, but there's lots of birdies on it. Just because it's a little bit shorter, you can... You can kind of make make it a little bit work for a par four. Paddy's roll looked like it might have cut OB for a second there, but he, he knows the disc pretty well. It's an interesting shot Paddy took there with the roller. Yeah, Ricky. Yeah, I'm not sure what I'm not sure what the perfect landing zone was for him. I guess he's just trying to get it down there and take the birdie. Beautiful roller from Tim. Unlucky to hit that tree, but it's nice to see a player who gets a, a disc to flip into the roll rather than just putting it on that, that roll angle to start with. It always looks good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is the uh, These kangaroos around this lake are part of a birth control 
trial. They're trialling some drugs to try and uh, see if they can limit how rapidly they reproduce, which you know, kangaroos are known to do. And those ladies with the collars on are the subjects of the trial. Got some sort of uh, injection they've had or something like that. Huh. Another sidearm from Jacko. Yeah, nice. they're, they're marsupials, kangaroos, and they reproduce like marsupials. <laughs> they breed very rapidly. Some lovely sidearm upshots there. Another sign of good course design, hey, that it, it forces players to use those, those shots they might not be comfortable with, and that's a great putt from Jackson. Mm. Yeah. Really solid. If that was, if we were three or four strokes closer together, that would have been a very t telling putt for Paddy to get in terms of the contest, and it still kind of was because it, it holds Jackson at bay. There's a chance that Jacko could have got a throw back on him there, but. Well, Paddy put that to bed. Nice straddle putt from Geordie there. Looks like, looks like we've got our putts warmed up a little bit now. Yeah. That brings us to the end of the first half of our coverage. We'll see you for the final 13 holes. Yeah, thanks for joining us.